France prison van attack. Unprecedented manhunt for escaped prisoner. Brilliant that, isn't it? The BBC's gone pretty quiet on this story for some reason, almost like they don't want you to look into it too much because then you might find out who the bloke is that's escaped from prison and who the gang is that's assisting him. I'll give you a clue. Um, the director of Taken noticed something back when he directed that film. Essentially in the late 90s and early noughties, all of the people who knew anything, decades after the very far-sighted John Raspail wrote um, The Camp of the Saints, it was noticed one particular group, very large numbers of which moved to France from Algeria and Morocco and places like that, um, was taking over the criminal underbelly of France, especially in the big cities. Obviously, nobody wants to be talking about that, so they're hoping this will go away. But this story should be headline news all over the place because this type of thing happening in a formerly first world nation like France used to just be within the bounds of Hollywood movies. A full-blown prison assault with AK-47s, up to and including the murder of prison guards, would have been headline news for days when the world was sane. But obviously now we've got to talk about pronouns and what have you. But this is a big deal, and people should be aware of it. And I'm going to tell you why. Right, first things first, let's see what the BBC has to say about it. You know, just to get the baseline of lies, propaganda and manipulation, let's see what the BBC has to say about it, and then I'll give you the actual story, shall I? A major manhunt is underway in France after two prison officers were killed in an ambush on a police van. Police say the man who was freed has links to a gang in Marseille. CCTV footage shows the moment a dark car veers into a white prison van and at least two masked attackers start shooting. Terrified passengers on a passing bus throw themselves to the ground. The prisoner himself, wearing white trainers, emerges from the prison van. The gang sets fire to their own vehicle. Some of them run towards another car, a white one, to begin their escape. Ils seront interpellés. Ils seront jugés et ils seront châtiés à la hauteur du crime qu'ils ont commis. Yeah, they will be punished commensurate to the, com the crime that they have committed, which in the modern era means they'll get 25 years in prison, probably get let out after 15, you'll be paying for three squares for them for the rest of their lives, up until they get out, and then you'll be paying for the council house and the benefits and any um, illegitimate children the father, because that is justice. The families of the people they murdered won't get any. And if you're a victim of a crime like that in this day and age in the Western world, there is no justice. The only justice you get is the justice you take, because the justice system is an embarrassment, a global embarrassment. They still do what needs to be done in Japan when people commit heinous crimes. But here, there's no fear of doing things like that. Like, like a scene out of Heat, where Robert De Niro and, his, and Val Kilmer are pepper-potting down the street, vittling up police officers. That used to be only in the realms of fiction when the world was saved, but now you see it on the streets of France. So, I mean, people like me are preaching to the converted, I know. But how long have we been telling you not to go to places like Paris? France is now the armpit of Europe. I think I went there on a school trip in about 96 and it smelled of baked bread and fine wine. And you used to see people with stripy sweaters and daft moustaches leering at women. <laughs> That's what you used to see in France. Now you're more likely to see a Somalian goat herder enjoying extramarital relations with a farm animal under the Eiffel Tower. I mean, have you been to, Far have you been to Paris? There's just blokes selling trinkets under the Eiffel Tower. You get accosted when you go within a mile of it. I am only half joking when I say I would rather go for a walk around Kabul than Paris. Uh, in fact, no, I'd, I think I actually would. Now the Taliban are in charge, I'm sure they'll soon get the, they'll soon get the streets ship shape, won't they? Lopping off hands for thieving. They'll, they'll soon get the place squared away. Do a better job of it than Bungalow Biden, won't they? The BBC simply tells us that Mohammed Amra, known as The Fly, was being taken back to jail for a court from a court in Normandy on Tuesday when a car rammed the prison van at a toll booth. They killed two officers and seriously injured three others. And then this is the best part, because it's in France. <sighs> Hundreds of staff at prison and detention centres across the country have been staging work-to-rule protests where they will only perform essential tasks. <laughs> so they're dealing with an unprecedented assault on prison staff and they're on strike. 
Obviously, it's France. It's a road strike. Zuta Laws, you expect me to work for a living? Unlucky. Unlucky. Good luck finding them. Is, is there anyone going to look for them? Probably all on strike. It's France. Don't worry though, lads. A minute's silence will be taking place outside the prison on Wednesday. <laughs> you have to laugh. That'll sort it. Yeah. When people butcher women and children, play Imagine on a piano. When there's Hollywood-style assaults on prison vans and they kill a load of guards, have a minute's silence. That'll fix the problem. <laughs> <laughs> and then just go back to tugging yourself off and striking. Yeah, loads of work getting done in France. He's done a fantastic job, Annie Macron. And then back to the important stuff. The French justice minister's going to meet with the union representatives. Brilliant. Love that. Really grappling with the big issues there. This splendid gentleman here is the fly. Um, Looks a bit like one, doesn't he? He's got eyeballs like a mud skipper, that fella. And they call him that because he vomits over his um, goat, over his mutton. <laughs> before he eats it, because it makes it taste better. You know, it's cooked in a traditional fashion. Uh, he was requiring a level three escort, which meant there was at least five prison officers travelling with him, and that done them loads of good, didn't it? His mother says he hadn't given any indication of that he'd try to escape. No, he doesn't talk to me. He's my son. He definitely doesn't talk to me. Of course he doesn't. Of course he doesn't. These are the same people who, when they were grooming kids, the mothers and the sisters used to help them. They used to call the minivans to drive the kids around to the kebab shops in. Uh, but now they just go, yeah, doesn't tell me anything. He's only my son. Why would he talk to me? Drug-linked violence is exploding in France, obviously. And the one thing you'll notice if you go through all of these stories, that they don't like talking about who's actually doing it. And they're quick and they're quick to tell you that the spread of drugs, it's not just the result of foreign mafias. No, it's not. It's, it's Pascal and Claude. They're doing it. Weird that, innit? But whenever you see a crime like this, or you ever see a mugshot, or you see the people doing it, it's the same when they were rinsing people outside Charlie Hebdo and killing cartoonists and blowing women and kids up at the Bataclan and everything else. They don't really look like Pascal and Claude, do we? But I'm, I'm, the BBC's assuring us that that's who's doing it, and I believe them. Yeah. Don't, don't you? You should. The BBC don't lie constantly, all the time, and hire misinformation journalists who lie constantly, all the time, and shield nests of pedos <laughs> for decades and cover up grooming gangs and write puff pieces on illegals who, a couple of months later, get caught rogering children or stabbing people to death in the face on London Bridge. Uh, yeah, BBC wouldn't do that. So uh, let's give them the benefit of the doubt this time, shall we? <laughs> Anyway, that's the story. Hollywood-style movie action on the streets of France. I thought it couldn't get any worse. The last time I went there, and instead of baked bread and fine wine, all I could smell was human shite. But uh, apparently, they've managed it. Well done, France. I didn't think you could supersede my extremely low expectations, but you did. So hats off, lads. Cheers. <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comments, as usual, and I will see you all very shortly. Toodle pip. Cheers. Mm-hmm.